the culture, but at least I can say from the point of view of someone who came from outside and had to live for quite some time with the uh, with the uh, local people, people local, local standards of performance and communication. So I will just try to share some of uh, my experience there. Uh, a bit about myself. Uh, I've spent, I'm originally from Ukraine. I spent uh, most of Ukraine. I've, I've worked in Slovakia, then I moved to UK, uh, where, where I worked in Leeds and in, 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 in London, mainly for digital media companies, so both private or boutique type of consultancy, and also large uh, digital media companies, networks such as Omnicom, for example, and Havas, French. Uh, conglo media conglomerate, so I probably have uh, quite a diverse agency side of experience, not much of the client side. I did, did have a few projects on client side, but I probably my, my expertise lies more on the side of agency, how agency handles large accounts, how they sell and buy media, what, what the difficulties, how they work with agencies, for example, and so on. Uh, I, did a, a MBA course in at University of Oxford a few years back, five years already. Um, and last four years I have been running a, a digital media company. And we have offices in, in several countries. Uh, about Scan, we, uh, we work a lot with data, with analytics, with technology. We develop our own technology products. Uh, we work in UK, France, Ukraine. Most of our clients are from the UK. And we, um, yeah, we're, we're always a Google partner, member of Open Data Institute, quite a few others. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's about us. Anton asked me if, if, I, if there's something I want to share with the world, a personal message. My personal message is that we are hiring, actively hiring amazing people, talented people for UK and London offices. We uh, offer good career options, investing a lot in, in progression, Korea classes, uh, English classes, paid for seminars, conferences, courses, uh, very high quality of best practices, standards, and, and clients. So if you're a digital marketeer who just start, or if you would like to uh, expand your knowledge or experienced person, please just, just give us a shout and we're happy to discuss with everyone. So um, I just, just want to probably give an, get an idea of from what areas and what levels the audience is here today. So could you just briefly in a couple of words say who, who you are and what your uh, main area where you work like junior SEO specialist or established uh, expert and PPC, whatever, if you could just uh, perhaps give a few, a few comments on what, what sort of people are here today. PPC, perfect, I love PPC, PPC is my, my favorite subject. So if anyone else? So Aksana is focusing on PPC. Okay, so we will uh, we'll touch on PPC and uh, some some other areas. So IT recruiter business. Okay, okay, great. Uh, digital, perfect. Okay, so I think we have kind of quite a good level of expertise and quite broad range of, um, of specializations. I think that's, that's pretty much how, how we found it initially to go. Uh, okay, UK, uh, the wonderful world of UK marketing. Uh, I think it's the second largest uh, market of the, after the US. Depends how you measure, but it's kind of on, on, uh, on average media market in online, especially online media market. It's kind of second after the US. And it has a bit of time lag. For example, something is getting introduced in the UK, like for example, mobile ads, and there is a few years lag comparing to uh, UK and US. But again, this is very average. Sometimes some things get adopted very fast in both countries, but kind of overall, uh, I think globally, it would be fair to say that UK is the second, second largest. If we think on the local scale, uh, to, like Europe and EMEA, which is um, uh, Middle East Africa kind of, uh, area, the main, many offices, head offices of the global company for that region 
would be located in London. So London is really the capital of, of the local world, I would say. So, and working with digital agencies, I had experience of managing PPC campaigns mainly uh, across the whole Europe and Middle East and um, if, if you Africa, not, not much more PPC going on there, but uh, still kind of if you are looking for a more global outlook in, the, in, kind of in terms of European region, you, you want to go to London because that's where everything happens. And also there are a few aspects, obviously it's in England, it's, it's English, it's a global language, it, but it has its specifics, its local specifics. So if you did work in the US, you still want to kind of make sure that you had a minute and review the, the differences and how different language, different words spelled in, in English to make sure that uh, you, you just don't not extrapolate. Uh, uh, don't extrapolate the U.S. experience in the uh, uh, in the London. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kurban Ali, are you having any problems uh, hearing? I'm not sure. Do you, you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, cool. Uh, so, uh, next one, so main trends, again, my experience here lies from the more perspective of uh, a few years back to digital media, but that's main trends overall that we were looking at now. Obviously mobile, it's a trend every year, but it, 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 every year it's very, very important and very up-to-date. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, local search, programmatic media buying is a very big thing at the moment. Something if you want to, can, if you would like to consider for your uh, kind of longer term career. Right now, if you're just looking to enter somewhere. Uh, and demographic targets. So I, I, I guess those those things are qu quite abundant. I would just touch it on a few, a few of them. The roles of channels. Again, I'm, I'm just trying to highlight the differences between UK and other countries. So smartphone penetration. You can just see what's the difference here. Uh, UK really world reader, leader in terms of how many smartphones are out there. One is back here. I'm, I'm really sorry about what happened. I guess, Vitlana, you can continue. No, no worries, that's, that's fine. If you want to, by the way, if you want to comment on something, perhaps you could do it. Also. I'll just continue. Okay. So just have a look at the chart. Comparison is really striking. A lot of people in the UK are using mobile phones. Uh, it, can be a bit misleading though, that number of actively used apps, if you see below, is almost the same as in, in Ukraine. So in reality, Ukrainian people actually own less mobile phones, but they use it, them very actively. So I think we shouldn't overestimate the, or estimate the importance of mobile, although it is important, a lot of local search and trends and uh, other day-to-day uh, uh, -day activities are happening on the mobile phone. So if, if, if you're in search, if you're in SEO, just yeah, keep in mind that mobile is really, really important to, if you want to talk to mobile perhaps first. And here is the um, comparison of the uh, conversion, um, uh, last click conversion attribution, which I think uh, is quite important here because it illustrates how people interact with different media. And here on the chart, you see for Germany, 
uh, what the what channels are uh, resulting in conversions and what channels are resulting in actual assisted clicks. So you first see banner ads, you kind of okay, you you can see this a brand, but then you make a conversion on actually on search. Uh, whereas here, in, like in Germany, social wouldn't be any uh, wouldn't be a reason for someone to click on social ad and then make a conversion. And the same with email. So they receive emails, they read it, but they probably wouldn't buy anything from email. And now comparing to the UK, we see very dramatic, dramatic difference. So actually just display click would, would be something just out there and perhaps will just help people to remember the brand next time they, they do search. Uh, but uh, every, pretty much everything else is actually call to action for them. So people buy from emails, people buy from clicking on social ads. So that, that's very important when you plan your digital marketing campaigns. So, if you want to make sure that you consider email, for example, as not a brand building channel, it's it's really selling channel, social is really a selling channel. And I think it, this is very typical for UK approach in general. Direct response is, is very strong. So if you kind of if you can have it come in the digital uh, agency in the UK and say, okay, I do digital marketing, and they say, oh, how did you sell? What, what did you sell? And your last job. And when you walk in into digital uh, marketing agency in the UK and say, oh, I'm, uh, I do digital marketing and they will ask, oh yeah, really, how, how do you kind of measure impact of the display campaigns when you sell beer on, like when you advertise beer online? And those are real stories <laughs> I've done both situations and like I just couldn't display it, uh, speaking with some Ukrainian colleague that we actually were not selling beer by internet, but we're selling air ticket, uh, flight tickets and, uh, and, and clothing and, and uh, travel and anything else. So that's, that, that's quite a bit of difference here. Okay, the next one is a, uh, just to show the, the composition of those, uh, uh, those channels assist via last interactions. I think it's interesting here that display creek this display advertising is really, really, it's, it, it's just about brand campaign. So if you plan a direct response campaign with your, uh, within the UK, you probably don't want to put too much of a uh, budget in your display activities, unless you have specific brief objective to, to kind of to, to establish brand just because people, people won't buy it through display ads. And just one more illustration. Uh, in Germany, for example, all the revenues are coming from, or majority of revenues uh, are coming from uh, first click. So people click on an ad and they buy, 60% 60, 60 of them click on the buy ad they buy. Uh, in the UK, it's other way around. So, uh, 64% of total revenue comes from purchases made in more than one step. So they find an ad, they click on it, they look at your website, they close the browser, they come back in one uh, a week, and then they probably buy. So in your analytics, if you do proper attribution analysis, you will see that it's pretty, um, really, you, you need to plan that conversion funnel and think how many clicks and in what channel people make before actually they they make a purchase. And that's a, an extra challenge for any, any digital market, marketeer because when you look at your report and you see that last, uh, last uh, a lot of conversions are attributed to SEO, for example, to organic results, uh, but it's, in, and, and you invest a lot of money of, into this channel, but it's not true actually because the, the, it works a bit different as the people first perhaps see you display ads and then they uh, go organic and then they click on your ad. Um, so yeah, um, that's more technical thing and I do welcome questions, more details, but I'm not sure what would be more interesting here. Uh, perhaps a bit on language and, and tradition, uh, cultural tradition, so to say. Uh, you really need to pay attention, obviously, for, for any local campaign, something you need to pay attention to, but here's a trap. A lot, some of the English, uh, British English words spelled differently. The style is different if you work in the U.S. campaigns because you, you you kind of you you are not loud. You're not bragging like the best ever product. Buy now! Triple exclamation mark! No, no! Triple exclamation mark is a big no. Don't say about yourself that you are just the best and it's kind of blinking stars all, all over your uh, banner because that's not how people 
actually behave. So you need to be a bit uh, muted down. You, you, you want to be logical. You would want to be a bit modest in, in the way how you present your product. Uh, there are multiple, multiple aspects of the language. So you, you need to pay attention to those ones if you want to create a successful SEO content or, or run a PPC ad. Uh, so culture, okay, that's uh, that's a big thing. That's my, my personal favorite. And uh, again, this is point of a few of my personal experience spent many years in the UK and then coming back to Ukraine and building my company here here in Ukraine, not here, there, there in Ukraine. Um, so, because uh, the style of communication is extremely important. When you work as, with a British client or someone who more of a British culture. You need to make sure you know all the rules of communication. They're very simple, but things like putting a structured email saying, hello at the beginning, hi, hi Anton, how are you kind of things, are uh, very important. Putting a signature saying, yeah, best regards, Svetlana, uh, again, very important because uh, those are small bits and they're probably meaningless overall, but the the reader or your your, or your client, someone who you work with, will use those marks subconsciously to understand how respectful you are, how professional you are. So if you if you receive a, an email from someone in the morning without just saying hello or good morning or whatever, uh, without mentioning your name, it's it's a red flag straight away. So. Why, why, why this person is this kind of rude to me? And uh, again, totally uh, silly and senseless, but that's, that's how the communication standards normally work. So you need to make sure that you just follow those uh, little bits. You, you just say thank you for something that you ask for in an email. You put your signature, you say hello, uh, you copy all the relevant people, you put subject into email. Uh, that's, I, 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 th I think if you, if you want to be successful working with a UK client, this is the first thing you have to do. Secondly, of course, for professionalism, of course, the, the level of your expertise, but if you cannot communicate correctly and, and just make sure that you perceived by your vis-a-vis uh, -vis as, as, as a uh, polite and professional person, that's not, the, the, the communication wouldn't happen. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of very basic thing, but I think it's just important to keep in mind that when you speak to your uh, to your colleague in the UK, and just just a bit of summary. Uh, pay attention to language, pay attention to culture, know the lifestyle because that's a very big thing for uh, for any local campaign. Uh, for example, things like it it it, it gets very dark in the UK, like especially in the north. It's half of the year it's dark. It's not that foggy as, uh, and rainy as, as people tend to believe, but it's, it, 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 it's northern country, it's an island. So uh, sun is not very, uh, very often visitors there. So uh, you just have to know that if tomorrow we're going to have a nice, bright, sunny weekend, they just don't uh, switch off your campaign because it's, because it's not going to work anyway. No one will be online. No one will be, especially for some entertainment type of things. People just get out and they just enjoy sun as much as they can. So, uh, for example, major rugby uh, games, which is kind of national national sports, I think as as popular as as football, so cricket. You want to keep in mind when they have a big uh, big contest, big, big games, just just to make sure you plan your campaigns and campaigns around uh, around that event. Uh, and also, I think very important thing to consider that UK, uh, especially London. Now, let's consider London. London is not a place where British people live. It's a place where all kind of people live. Uh, you can, I, I think, after I, I first a few years when I spent there, all my friends were from abroad somewhere, not the actual British people. And it's very hard to find. Well, it's quite rare to find someone who was born in London. It's not kind of local place. People get older, they they get a mortgage and they move out of London because they don't want to live in large megapolis. So it's it's it, it's a melting pot, as they say. It's it's a mixture of all cultures, and the level of Britishness 
perceived by, by, by this community is nothing more than just level of culture because that is a common denominator for people who come there and they learn how to kind of interact and how to speak English and how to communicate so it's not necessarily you're not necessarily coming and speaking to, uh, to British British but you it, it kind of just just uh, uh, lingua franca for, uh, for, for international community uh, and I think we actually done. We have, yeah, 30 minutes, almost exactly 30 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, either to just, just ask your questions now. If you have, if you need some time to gather your thoughts, feel free to ping me um, on, uh, on email. Uh, I, I will be happy to follow up with any questions. And also, yeah, just, 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 just let me know if there's uh, anything you would like to discuss. Thank you. Uh, I think I will... uh, thank, thank, yeah, I'm, I'm back here. Yeah, thank you very much, Svetlana. It was a very interesting, uh, very interesting speech. Thank Unfortunately, I, me I missed about, um, I, I think, about one third of it. It's really a pity. I hope uh, people will have a question to you. Uh, I will ask a question. I used to live in London myself uh, for some 15 years as well. Um, Tell, tell us, uh, was it difficult for you? you? Obviously, English is not your, your first language. London is not your native uh, uh, no, native town, isn't it? Uh, uh, no, so no, was no, it, I, was, I was, was it really difficult for you to get in, to get uh, really accustomed to, uh, to rhythm and to everything? Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good question. I really like the story because actually when I came first to the UK, um, I came to Leeds, which is up north. And you pro yeah. <laughs> of course, you want to know how they speak up there. Uh, it's not yeah. English. <laughs> it's not English. It's, it's, uh, it, it's something. And they don't make an effort. And in, in London, if people don't understand, they will go in the past. They will make an effort. They don't uh, make any effort to understand. And I came to, um, to London, start, have been studying for quite a few years actually English and I thought I speak I spoke English uh, and I came there I couldn't understand anyone no one could understand uh, me and that was a huge yeah it sounds uh, it sounds familiar well, we do have a question from audience uh, uh, Ira Sevastianova asking how often you can media companies outsource IT services or uh, do this uh, have in-house IT departments uh, so it's a question about outsourcing. Outsourcing, uh, uh, what do you think about uh, UK media companies? Do they outsource IT services? Sure, I think it's a really good question because uh, obviously I have experience from, from both ends. And uh, talking about large, uh, large media companies, you don't want to go there because that's... Uh, uh, like really large companies because normally they they do outsource uh, but that level of contracts which probably very often decided internally it's very high competition a lot of kind of people trying to sell their IT services to uh, to media media houses and they also do tend to have resources in house just because when they are large enough they can afford to to, to build it in separate team. now if we talk about the more medium uh, medium sized agency. Uh, I know a, a good friend of mine works for a SOMA agency, which is based in London, and they outsource uh, to uh, SoftServe. No, no, not SoftServe, sorry, Soclo, Cyclone. They have a dedicated team at Cyclone, uh, which just build, builds tools for them. So, yeah, they, they do do that. Uh, overall, if we want to touch IT, and I really like this topic, we, <laughs> we can talk separately about that, but um, there's a really big shortage of the skill uh, in interest of IT and development in London. You cannot find any senior development to hire full time, it's just impossible, or you will be paying 100 grand per, uh, per year at least to, to them. So, uh, yes, opportunities are there, media companies, non media companies, but uh, I think what stops local Ukrainian companies just lack of this cultural understanding, like lack, lack of uh, systematic approach and just making continuous effort to understand the culture, understand the selling cycles, understand the expectations of the customers. I hope I answered the question. So, I, I, I so they might need some, some mediums. 
they might need some medium company in, in England who understand both of, both of the end. Okay, maybe. Okay, Ira, uh, does it answer your question? Say yes or no in a chat. And we have another question from Mr. Kurban Ali from Bangladesh. He's actually asking before hiring a person, what process recruiter follow? Do they offer a visa? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. British are very tough on visa, as I understand. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, very good. Sorry, yeah, I just again very good question. It's not, uh, not, not just because I'm saying every time it's a good question, but indeed uh, something I wanted to cover in terms of recruitment, but I just didn't have enough time. So uh, last uh, company which I worked was Omnicom. Uh, Omnicom is large international global network, and their uh, London head office is actually managing. All campaigns for pan-European accounts and for Middle East and, and uh, even a bit of Asia. So they were crazy about people who can speak languages. Russian language, especially any European languages. Uh, I, I, I think even Arabic, so they would hire any decent person who walked in and, and say, okay, I speak three languages is just like very exciting because they have to check PPC campaigns, SEO, uh, SEO content. They have to kind of write, they, they do need native native people to manage. So that was a huge problem. We were looking all the time for someone who can uh, do a decent PPC campaign, but also can uh, speak native, the other languages. Uh, but visa, uh, visa <laughs> is a very, very big question. Uh, my company just now, we have been through the process of uh, issuing a work visa for our business development manager, who's American, he's from US and he doesn't need a visa. And it's such a painful process that no company in their solid mind would just go through it because they can find people in Europe, in the UK, and they don't have to spend that much, they don't have to go through that many hurdles, bringing in someone abroad, it's just not justified. Uh, mm. if, if you, I would say don't count on it, no. Come, come in as a student, come in as a, any other visa, but find a job and then perhaps if they do value you, they can offer you visa assistance. Otherwise, no. Okay, so, so Mr. Ali. I have similar experience, but this is, yeah, from my end. Okay, Mr. Ali, I don't know if it's answer your question, but basically uh, it's very tough to get a, a working visa in the UK. Um, okay, any other questions? Any other questions, audience? Okay, uh, Svetlana, um, I'm pretty sure you had some. Uh, okay, we, we got a question. Yeah, okay, Gleb. Um, are your production yeah. people in Kyiv and sales in UK? Uh, yeah, you, we have we have to pronounce the question. Otherwise, in the record, people won't see it. I your production people in, are in Kiev, so your production office is in Kiev, and your sales people are, are in UK. Uh, Svetlana? Mainly, yes. Answer is yes. Uh, we kind of do, do transfer sometimes our uh, technical people, engineers to UK, but not on non permanent basis. Okay, Gleb, uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, so you can contact Svetlana, she, she left emails and, and everything, or you can uh, visit a website which is on a screen at the moment, and they are hiring as I understand, so you can contact them directly and talk to them about that. Any more questions, audience? Okay, Svetlana, I'm pretty sure at the beginning, uh, like today at the beginning of this, um, a webinar, I was out. I couldn't hear anything. It's my blunder. Even I supposed to prepare everything. Did you have any any fine blunders when you start to work in England? Any uh, language mm -hmm. misunderstanding? Funny, funny ones. So 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 we will be all laugh. Today is Friday, isn't it? Oh, it is indeed. Yes, very exciting. By the way, Friday, uh, Anton, sorry, I'm not probably uh, not will answer directly a question. My first years were one big blunder. <laughs> I cannot, cannot remember anything in particular. But Friday, uh, Friday is a huge day. Friday, every single person goes out and drinks beer in a local pub, um, which I think is a really good tradition. And I do try to kind of promote it uh, here in Ukraine as well, um, which is good for team building as well. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I cannot think about 
some particular um, particular cases. But yeah, I, I think my main. But, but I'm pretty sure there were there were some. This would be my excuse for my today's blunder at the beginning of the uh, webinar. Uh, Mr. Ali asking another question: Does company offer remote position? Any approximate percentage? So probably he's asking uh, how many what percentage of the people you offer in a remote position? Yeah. Do you? Our companies can. Uh, yes, yes, we we do work quite a bit with remote people. The reason being that it's not always easy to find someone full time locally. It's actually recruitment is, is one of the big challenges for us. We we want over to have everyone local, but it's not always possible. So yeah, we we do quite use quite a lot of remote specialists. Uh, Ira Sevastianova asking, she checked scan.co uh, and there is no job section, no vacation section, uh, vacancies. Uh, uh, well, Svetlana, is there yeah, any sure. job you... section in scan.co? Sure, if you go to company and work with us. No, she's probably asking about your website. So it's a company section, work with us. Okay, it's a scane.co backslash work dash with dash uh, us backslash. Okay. I, although I don't okay. think it's, it's, it's too helpful though because we have just development positions and they're London based positions. Uh, but Again, our our policy: if, if you're bright, if you're passionate, if you're driven, do get in touch. It's not about vacancies; it's about people. We, we do hire people if we find someone really suitable. We we can hire them even if we don't have uh, a project for them right now, and then we find a job because quality of of talent is is number one priority anyway. So just just get in touch. Uh, any other question, audience? Uh, yeah, okay, Mr. Ali, another question. Are you hiring as your uh, expert? I, I think, Mr. Ali, you 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 got you got uh, details. You got contacts. You can actually write to Svetlana or write to Skin dot co directly. Put your CV or something like that. Svetlana, am I correct? Sure, but uh, also a brief comment here because I think it would be relevant. So what is SEO in general? Uh, I think previously we kind of looked at SEO as a, um, a technical job. So you, you would kind of generate a lot of links, you would buy links, you would sell links, you would kind of go into link farms. It was a technical thing. Nowadays, Google is so advanced that if you want to do a quality SEO job, you you, you you just don't do any white or any sorry any black hat approaches so to call you write blog articles you hire a good technical team who makes sure makes sure that you have all the correct tags in place and that your page loads fast uh, but SEO expert as such you know it's it, it's such an ambiguous role so uh, I I do probably if you an SEO expert I wouldn't position yourself as as such in the UK market at least or because it's also English is a native language of Google so they are very good at figuring out if you're just trying really hard to impress this the, the search crawler or you're doing generally good work with uh, creating unique content for your clients so either you create content and you're really good at it and you're really good at social or kind of engagement strategies or you're really good at technical aspects optimizing pages which means you're yeah, probably a developing kind of technical person uh, more biggest SEO roles probably no more so that's my recommendation okay I don't know if it's ask answer the, your question Mr. Ali so basically yeah you hear the answer but you still can uh, try to contact uh, dot and impress them with your ability to write uh, an articles. Uh, uh, any other questions? No questions. So, um, uh, Svetlana, thank you very much. Uh, I can see you're not in England. You probably, the little flag, is, is what is 
It's Croatian. I hope it's much Croatia. sunny over. It's it's Croatian. It's much sunny over there. So you have a nice holiday. Thank you very much for your very interesting, uh, uh, very interesting speech today. And uh, I'm sorry again uh, for uh, for my blunder. So uh, that I was out of, but it's my fault, and I lost uh, some of it. Uh, we'll have more webinars next week. We'll have. Uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday. It's all in our web page. You can have a look, and we will send all uh, uh, a, re a remind to you. Uh, and uh, again, Svetlana, thank you very much for a very interesting conversation. Uh, oh, Mr. Alisin, Friday is better. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, thanks God is Friday, isn't it? Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, uh, thank you, thank and you, good. It's yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks very much for for uh, inviting me. It was really a pleasure, and uh, thank you, the audience, for for your attention, for great questions. Uh, I hope everyone mm -hmm. has a wonderful weekend. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody will do, especially people who stay in Croatia at the moment. Uh, okay. Good thanks, well. everybody. Thanks, everybody, and have a nice weekend. Thank you, and goodbye. Thanks, Anton. Cheers. Bye, bye. Bye.